Welcome back Gadgeteers. We have another unboxing. We have a MacBook Air. This is an M3, 13.6 inch, 16 gigabyte memory, 512 gigabytes of storage. So it is the M3 model. We're gonna have a look at it. We're gonna unbox it, set it up. Then we'll compare it to my MacBook Pro 14 inch M3 Pro and see how it looks. All right, let's get started. To begin, in case you're curious, the part number is MXCU3LLA, model number A3, excuse me, model number A3113. So if you're looking to order one of these, those are important numbers to know. This is a 13 inch model. We have 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 520. 512 gigabytes of storage. So things have changed a little bit in the boxes and how they're opened. It used to be um, that it had a plastic, clear plastic over it, but now they've changed it. I like this though. Basically, once you remove this, it's unsealed. I suppose it's still sticky. You could fake it if you wanted to, but who would want to do something like that? That never happens. Now we'll take the second piece off. I usually save the boxes. I'm sure many of you do too because you just never know um, if you sell it. They're worth a little more money with the boxes, believe it or not. All right, the lid comes off. And got a nice little tab here. To pull out the MacBook Air. And immediately I can already say that I really like how light that is. That's really nice. So this is the Starlight model. We'll open it up and have a better look. And check out this cable. What do you think is going to happen with this cable? Now the Midnight, the darker color, has a black cable. And my uh, MacBook Pro is the dark gray model. I forget what they called that one. But uh, it also has a black cable. This one, I don't know. I think it's, it's cloth. So you see what I'm saying? I have a feeling it's going to get really dirty really fast. Is that focused or not? Pardon my shaking hands, all that medicine. So we'll set that aside. I'm sure you've seen this 10 million times, but I'll show it anyway. And there will be a point, I think, where Apple won't even include any of this stuff. So we've got a MacBook Air. What's in this piece of paper? All right, before the heater went on, we were checking out the getting started little tiny brochure that comes with the any MacBook you buy really Let's see if I can get that in focus in case you want to have a look at it it's amazing how little is provided anymore and that'll be gone soon enough I'm sure and then we have a warranty card I believe before using MacBook Air, review the MacBook Air Essentials Guide at support.apple.com slash guide slash MacBook Air. Thanks. What if I don't have one? You know, a computer that I could boot up. i got to be able to boot that up before I go and look at it. And it comes with some stickers that are the color of this particular MacBook Air, which is Starlight. I really like that color. I think it's really awesome. It's nice to see colors other than just the silver. Space gray was a nice addition. Um, I really liked it when they added a couple different colors. I like the midnight and starlight and that. All right, power supply. So I wasn't sure about it, but it appears to be the case 
the power supply has two USB-C ports. So presumably I could charge my phone and my MacBook Air at the same time. Nice design. Notice what's missing. What's missing from here? No cable, but we have this cable here, which has the MagSafe connector and a USB-C connector for power purposes. If we want to, we can charge the MacBook Air. Actually, I'm gonna put this stuff somewhere else. We can charge the MacBook Air using a USB-C charger. All right, let's open it up. This thing is really light. Very, very light. I really like that. That's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. So thin. This would be the lightest laptop that I know of that I've ever picked up. So this is 2.7 pounds. It's literally one tenth of a pound lighter than the previous MacBook Air. Previous as in design, the M1 MacBook Air. So it's gonna turn on when we open it, but here we go. One finger lift, even with a MacBook Air. Is that not beautiful? If you watched a video I made a while ago, recently, you may have seen a video I did between the MacBook Air M1 and a Yoga 6 laptop. And I said, if you don't, if you don't want to get a MacBook Air or can't get a MacBook Air, get this instead. And I showed the Yoga 6 and we talked about the differences between the two. So does that mean that I no longer think you should get a Yoga 6? No, I think you should get what you can afford and what you're most interested in and which set of features provides for you what you need most. This particular laptop is going to run about $1,500 considering the minor upgrades that were done to it. The 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage. So that's a mitigating factor. And you know how I feel about RAM. I really think 512 gigabytes is minimum. All right, let's go ahead and press a key. And luckily it found English as our language. We'll go ahead and select it. And United States. Why? You're going to make me actually... Okay, I see. I've got to go down here and click continue this time. Not now for accessibility. And let's get logged into the fastest network I have. You can already see I've got a couple of smudges. I assume those are mine anyway. On the screen, data and privacy. The icon appears when an Apple feature sets asks you to use your personal information. All right. From a Mac time machine backup or startup disk. So I may have to go get my other Mac because I'm thinking I'll just go ahead and, you know, set it up like the MacBook Pro because I'm going to be using this computer to learn about and test out for a little while here. And continue. Your Mac is running on battery power. I'm going to say continue. Will it let me? Transfer information to this Mac. Okay. I have to go get a Mac to transfer information to. I'll be right back. All right. It's been about 10, 15 minutes. I tried to log into Migration Assistant here. It told me I had to log into my iCloud account. When I clicked the link to log in, you probably saw it. It said 
unsuccessfully logged out or something like that. So I finally gave up and power cycled, came back up, and it is prepared to go ahead and do a migration over to here. So let's click continue and yep that number is the same it's always nice to double check just in case I mean what are the chances somebody would be driving by and have my network password get on my network and then have a Mac ready to receive my particular MacBooks information not very it doesn't matter if you're diligent you will probably not have a problem in the future all right password time again all right password entered for the 50th time and we will click continue we have a mac os software license agreement and a hardware warranty I'm not going to look at those right now, but if you haven't looked at them, even if you don't understand what it is, you should have a look and see what you're agreeing to. Some of it you'll probably understand, and depending on who you are, you may understand a great amount of it. I have read, ask you twice to make sure I'm going to say agree because I have read it before and it's... You don't have very many rights whatsoever with regard to a purchase of a MacBook. Now it's interesting on the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, it's so tiny, I'll zoom in. Um, it says current connection peer to peer. So I'm wondering if they're talking directly to each other now or if they're going through the network to do so. I would say it would be faster if they were talking directly to each other. I think the last time I did this, it took about 15 or 20 minutes. So I'm going to pause here and we will be back when it's done. All right, the transfer is complete. I was a little nervous because it started out saying it was going to take like an hour and 37 minutes. And I thought, oh boy, but it actually wasn't that bad. It only took about... I'd say 40 minutes. I really didn't time it directly. So it made its migration. It actually powered this system off and I had to turn it back on again. And now it wants my password. Passwords, 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 passwords. I've got to get those passwords in. All right, hold on a second. All right, the installation is all done. It even transferred my wallpaper, which is cool and the battery charge was more than sufficient to do the transfer this particular computer did dim the screen and then it went black and i was worried it was gonna turn off so occasionally i would hit the shift key and try to keep it going but look at the size what do you think between the two systems i don't see a whole lot of a difference but you may have noticed the text over here is considerably smaller let's do some system setting changes because i usually make this change on any macbook i work with all right let's go down to displays and the default is okay but even on the 14 inch macbook pro at default it was you know a bit difficult for me to read so we're going to make it a little bit bigger and while we're here, just from habit, let's see. Actually, I think it's the way I want it, where you can reverse. Oh, I do want tap to click. Let's see how it is over here. We'll duplicate that. All right. All right, down. Down is down and over here, pulling it down. 
pulling it down makes it go down. All right. I don't know if you noticed, this screen's all of a sudden really dark. When it comes back awake, it usually goes to half brightness. And I'm going to have to make a change on that. So I really don't like that. I could put it on the automatic setting, but I've found it to be problematic. As far as I'm concerned, it's usually on too dim. So looking at these two screens, what's your thoughts? Now, allegedly, when we've got two MacBooks side by side, I'm supposed to be able to control the other one, but it doesn't seem to be working. I was able to do this with my tablet. Kind of surprised I can't do it. How about with the Mac Pro? No. Nope. So I put my tablet next to my MacBook Pro and I could move my cursor over to the other computer, which was the tablet, and click items and do whatever I would normally do on a tablet. And then on the screen, I could do what I normally do, do over and here. And let's start these at the same time and see which one starts first. Not a really good test of performance and certainly not something that we should worry about if we're using a system like this. Um, it's a, basically a brand new Mac. It should, even if it's a quarter of a second behind, it doesn't matter. It should be fine. So here we go. At the same time, just a little bit faster. Oh, good Lord. There we go. Let's see how it looks on full screen. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but the MacBook Pro display is ProMotion. And as I understand it, it's LED screen. So when I look at it, it looks like this area up here is darker than it is on the MacBook Air. So the MacBook Air is an IPS display. Really, I don't think it would be a problem for me. Um, first of all, it's almost up to maximum brightness. So if we were outside, I definitely would not notice the slight grayness up here, you know, where the uh, black isn't completely black. It's not completely black over here either, but it is much darker than over here. This screen is a 120 hertz pro motion. That screen is a basically a standard 60 hertz. But honestly, see, my eyes aren't all that great anymore, and I really would not be able to tell a difference. I don't know what you guys think, but no, I, would, I wouldn't be able to tell a difference. Why don't we do an audio test? I've always been curious about that. Um, I'm going to put on a different mic for that. I've got a, a mic on the on the camera and so I'm going to switch to that one and then we'll pick a, a some kind of file some kind of video that we can play all right we've got them on the same video so what I'm going to do is start them simultaneously the first audio you hear will be the MacBook Pro try to get it right synchronized it starts, the song really starts up at about 10 seconds in, so I'm going to wait till then.
in the studio, I can tell a marked difference in the MacBook Pro versus the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air has less bass, and it was getting distorted at that higher volume level than the MacBook Pro was. I really heard almost no distortion on the MacBook Pro, but on the MacBook Air, uh, there was a significant amount. And I had the audio set so that it was two dashes from the top on both of these. That's something to consider, but most people don't worry about it. They're going to do headphones, uh, AirPods, Bluetooth headphones. There's so many options. Most people aren't playing their music for everybody. They're playing it for them. All right, what I want to do now, go ahead and shut both of these down. And I wanted to point out that the... So much dust in here. The MacBook Pro comes in at 3.5 pounds and the MacBook Air comes in at 2.7 pounds. So that is significantly smaller uh, or in weight than this system is. Not quite a pound, but still quite a bit. The MacBook Pro, if I can get this to come in for you, looks kind of dark. Anyway. We got a MagSafe port, just like we do on the MacBook Air, two USB-C, a headphone jack. On the other side, we have a microphone slot, excuse me, a memory card slot, a full SD card memory slot, another USB-C, and an HDMI port. The one thing that I miss is USB-A. So none of that on either system. MacBook Air, let's see if I turn it this way, has two USB-C slots and it has a MagSafe connector. Welcome back, MagSafe connectors. And on the other side of this system, it has only an audio jack. So it really wasn't intended that this system was going to be used for professional work. I mean, if you wanted to, I suppose you could. Let's see if I can stack these. Get an idea of the size differential. Oh. We've got them stacked perfectly. And, you know, you got like maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch difference in the overall size of the system. Have a look at thickness. Just a slight, oops, slide down, taking off on me. There is a difference. You can see pretty clearly. I won't say it's dramatic, but, you know, this is part of what makes this system so much more heavier compared to this one. Is not only how small it is, but how thin it is as well. There are certain reasons you're buying this. The very first one is going to be how light it is. The second one will be how compact it is. Um, the third will be that it can do almost everything that a MacBook Pro can do, but without less weight. This one has fans in it. It has two cooling fans, so if you're rendering a video or you're compiling code, you know, something aggressive then you're probably going to want this one. If you're not doing it all the time, this one is, quite frankly, sufficient. You could probably use this all the time. So this one might render a 30-minute video in 10 minutes. This one might take 14 or 15 minutes because it has to throttle down the CPU to avoid overheating. Not a problem to me. I would be good with that, either one. This one, because it's so light, it's just really made for that travel and the thinness. I love it. I don't know why the screen keeps going dark. I think auto is turned on, auto screen brightness, and I don't like that setting. Let's see if we can turn it off. Displays. Yeah, automatically adjust brightness. 
I prefer to do it myself because my experience has been that the brightness will be too low, um, usually, for my eyes. You know, everybody's different. And I forgot also, there's one other thing I like to do. And I really wish these types of settings would transfer from system to system. Is it? Trackpad. And we can cruise over it. I believe it's in more gestures. My mistake, it's actually in point and click. And the secondary click is click with two fingers. That's the one I've been using more and more because this idea of getting down into the corner here, this small spot, you know, you got to move your hand pretty far where with two fingers you can just tap them no matter where you are. I really like that. So that must be the default or possibly it came over. One other thing I wanted to take a look at. The MacBook Pro keyboard has a little bit more travel than the MacBook Air and you do have to sacrifice some of the quality of the keyboard. It's not a butterfly keyboard on the new MacBook Airs, but it has, you know, very similar travel, much more shallow than the MacBook, MacBook Pro. The MacBook Air, it's an actual chiclet keyboard. So the MacBook Pro is now one complete unit. There's no aluminum in between it. Boy, I have a lot of care in this house, I tell you. So depending on what you think some people won't like that that short travel it's not all that different from the macbook pro but there's definitely a difference something to think about if you're a typist you're going to be typing a lot well that may be important to you all right well that's what i've got for you with the macbook air and how it looks how it stacks up against the macbook pro this one's going to be more for heavy hitters. This one, you know, it's the all-in-one. It's the I can do everything on my MacBook type system. As I said before, don't really... Okay, I can't say that. I was going to say don't look at the 8 gigabyte systems, but not everybody has $1,500 to drop on this system. I had a good friend who used to say, save your pennies. You know, if you want one of these and you want the nicer system, with more storage and more memory. Save your money for a little while. This will go on sale. You can get it for a couple hundred dollars cheaper and you save a couple hundred dollars towards it and then you get this for the same price that you would have gotten a MacBook Air with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. All right, I hope that helps out. I've enjoyed talking to you and I will see you on the next Bass Gadgets.